G'day, it's Jason here from In Search of Australia. Today I return to Hill End to see if I can improve on the results I got last time, as well as apply a technique suggested by one of my viewers, and do a bit of detecting to see if there actually are any little nuggets around the place. Hope you enjoy. So the first thing we need to do is we need to lightly sketch in our horizon line. This is going to help us get our perspective. As you can see the building there. Angles down that way and angles that way along the road. So we need to find that horizon point probably around there. What? You're not here for the art? Oh, I'm sorry. You're here for the gold. Let's see what we can get. I return to Hill End with more experience under the belt, mixed with a sense of wonder as to how the town still has a feel of gold rush times. The old buildings that remain are quite remarkable, as well as the evidence of mining scattered all over the town. still in the middle of town. One of the many famous Gold Rush towns, Hill End became more famous for the Bayers Holterman specimen, which is the world's largest specimen of native gold ever discovered. And before you Victorians get all upset, the welcome stranger is the largest nugget ever discovered. Suck in the gut. <laughs> One of the problems here is that there is no water flow. It wasn't here last time either. So I'm going to try a technique that's been suggested by a viewer because they were critiquing the idea of the sluice being very efficient. So it's going to be a bit of a, how do we say, elbow grease versus sluice attempt here. So another thing I'm going to try is this really old sieve. It was uh, given to me by a colleague. Uh, thanks Flick, if you're watching this video. And I'm going to see if that helps just due to its sheer size with the speed at which I process. However, it won't fit a bucket as you can see. So I'm going to have to come up with something different. So the idea is to have a couple of buckets aside to just fill up with raw material. Then a bucket for sieving the larger bits out. Now I'm going to try this large sieve in here. It just fits by squeezing it into the sort of basin, plastic basin. Once I've got that material, I can then pan back and I don't have to pan all the way. I could pan quarter pans, then put them in another bucket until later. And so sort of sift through as much as possible first and just categorize it down to the point where I've got, I guess, a rich lot of gravel. Now, when I do the sieves, in the off chance I've got a nugget, I won't be able to find it with this, but what I can do is place it in the same spot. So when I did a test pan, I put the gem sieve here and dumped it in the one spot. I'm going to keep putting all the gravel in this spot and then bring the detector over and just see if there's anything there. So what I'm feeling is 
It's not that deep here. There's a whole lot of rocks. And then this drop off. And what I'm trying to do is hug the wall down and get all the material at the base of that. That's awesome. That's getting through it really fast. I might just dump here and then come back with the detector. There we go. This is amazingly efficient. The surface area that you can just push everything across helps amazingly. Um, I've already got this one whole bucket in about 10 minutes. That's how quick it was just to do one trowel or two trowels. Uh, I will go over that with the detector later, just in case there's something sizable. The uh, gold monster picks up a tiny piece of wire, at least half a meter deep. So it's gonna pick up any nuggets that would stick on this. So. I'm never leaving home without this thing again. It's amazing. I haven't finished all the buckets yet, but I'm just curious. So I'm going to try a little bit of this. So three trowels. Not too bad. Three trowels and about nine, ten specks of gold. All right, it's time to pan two buckets of processed material minus three trowels. So going without the sluice, the panning is pretty hard work. It's a lot to go through. And I think mixing that technique with a sluice would be far more efficient. So two buckets full. That's not bad. So that was actually about two hours work all up. And I'm impressed. I've been in places for a lot longer and got less. So Hill End does still have gold in it and it's a matter of finding those crevices that haven't really been touched or 
have had gold washed back in again. It's like a bit of aluminium that's been degraded, squashed and crushed and rolled around in the river. So it dawned on me, why don't I just go straight into the sieve and I think that'll even be faster. So, so far I've sort of worked this bit. And now I'm about here. So fast. Still getting the gold. It's not as numerous now. Uh, I'm moving away from that corner, which from what I can tell is in direct line as a drop off from where the river would flow. So I'm not sure whether some other forces start pushing things once you get around that other bend there. And there's my friend, the little, I don't know whether it's aluminium or steel or what it is. Um, they look like they're little rivets. Well, I shouldn't say rivets. The uh, stamped out disc from a rivet hole or something like that. Uh, I got one of these last time and thought it was a squashed shotgun pellet. But when I look at it closely, you can see that it's mechanically being made. So I've been testing a bit further out there where it goes deeper. I got a lot more gravel, like larger gravel, but no sort of clay silt and the gold specks were tiny. So you really do need to find that gray clay layer and sort of shave off the top of that to find the gold here. So the case in point, there's larger Flakes are actually from the place I started, and the tiny ones are from the deeper bit. So I've got a little bit of buckshot, larger specks of gold. I think I'm finding the the perfect point in this uh yes. the more observant amongst you may have noticed that i was using two different pans i was doing this just to try a few things out so the black pan i had originally is quite a shallow dish 
and the riffles are these sort of indents without a sharp edge. I find that it's easy to remove material, but it concerns me that it might be easy to lose gold as a result of that. So when I'm panning with this, I find I can sift down very quickly. So the Mine Lab Blue Pan has a really deep dish and these sharp riffles. So it's sort of got a sharp edge to catch things. And I've seen gold in these riffles. So I feel like this one's a safer bet to ensure you get everything. Obviously, any pan will work as long as you're careful, but I was interested to see how easy or difficult it was to use the two different types. My preference is the blue one. Just looks like some alien planet. I'm surprised no one's dug this area up. It's where I was last time. And I was working my way back into the grass here. I did a different tack this time, but if this is still here when I return at some point, I'll certainly dig it up. Uh, unless of course someone who's watching this gives it a go. Tell me how you go if you do. country here is pretty spectacular. So here's the final amount. Probably not worth weighing, but when I look back at my other Hill End video where I went, gee, that was really good, this was much better. So improvements all round. Um, I do believe that it's better to mix the sluicing in with that technique. That sieve was just a game changer. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.